So today we are going to create the ultimate integrated digital planning system. And all you need is Todoist and Google Calendar. You can have this planner for school, for work, and your day-to-day -day tasks. So pick a day during your week, ideally at the end of the week, so you can prepare for the new week. I usually do this during my weekly reset routine. And if you want me to do a video about how to create your perfect weekly reset routine, let me know in the comments. Now, pick a quiet time and space to do this because we want to focus. Next, we need to integrate both Google Calendar and Todoist together. So this is how you integrate it. So the settings are as follows. I'm setting it to primary and I want all projects in Todoist to be synced into Google Calendar. And any new event that I create in Google Calendar will appear in the inbox. When it comes to labels, I'm not going to add any labels. And then the default event duration will be 30 minutes. When it comes to completed tasks, now this is one of my favorite settings. When a task is completed in Todoist, it's removed from Google Calendar. Personally, I prefer it like that because then on my calendar, I can see how empty it's getting as the week goes on. So I can see that I'm making some sort of progress. Now, before we plan, if there are some tasks in your to-do list that depend on someone else too, ask for their schedule as well before starting to create your own schedule. For example, my gym times, most of my shopping times or longer, bigger errands also depends on my boyfriend's work schedule and days off because we prefer doing those things together. And of course, planning specific dates as well when it comes to that. Now, if you're wondering how I have these custom colors in my Google Calendar as well as a custom background, I have a video on that that I will link on top of the screen as well in the description box that really shows you how to do it. Now, let's change your primary calendar color to something that you like. Personally, for me, it's pink because pink has always been my color. So first things first, we want to schedule routine things like sleeping, the times you're eating, Eating. If you go to work or school, you're gonna schedule those in as well on what times those start and end. And if you have a solid morning routine or night routine or both, then schedule those in as well. And all of the space that you have left over on your Google Calendar, that is where the to-doist tasks will go. Now, if this video has been helpful so far, please do let me know by giving it a like and subscribe for more videos like this because I make videos all about using tech to become consistently productive and organized. Now, we're gonna go back to Todoist and we're gonna go to the inbox. And this is where you're gonna brain dump all the tasks and projects that you have. Now, where can you find these ideas if you're feeling a bit stuck and you're not sure if you're missing anything? These are the areas that you should check. So first of all, what's lingering in your head? We all have some sort of to-dos that are lingering in your head, like, oh, maybe I, I like, oh, I really need to fix this cupboard because it's really falling apart. Or for example, I need to buy my cats a new scratching post. The next area where you should look is your goals. So whatever goals you've set for yourself, either this year, this month, this quarter, whatnot, just break them down into smaller and smaller pieces. Because when it comes to your goals, you do want an action plan to actually execute them and achieve them instead of just having them in a list somewhere sitting and you not doing anything about it. Now, if you haven't created one yet, which you definitely should, and it's what I call the constant to-do list. Now, what is the constant to-do list, you might ask? Well, it is a list that has just reoccurring to-dos in your life or business or work or school. And they're literally just to-dos or reoccurring projects that you have either in your business or you're just your life. And the purpose of the list is to remind you that, hey, you should do this because genuinely, sometimes we forget. And the tasks that basically go in there are like our chores, like doing laundry or grocery shopping or creating a meal plan or working out. It's just a reminder to add those to your schedule because you might remember later in the middle of the week and then you suddenly realize you have no room to put them anywhere. For example, for me, I genuinely forget to do laundry until I come across the laundry basket and I notice that it's overflowing to the point where I have to basically do so much laundry in the span of a few days. So 
a constant to-do list really helps me remember that. Or checking up if you have your household products in stock. Do you have enough paper towels? Is your toothpaste running out? Things like that. So you can have like different lists. So you can even have little inventory lists for your home as well. Or your food. So that's a great place to find ideas. I always go through my constant ideas list when I'm creating my schedule for next week. Now, and of course, anything that you already have scheduled. It can either be written on a piece of card or you've written it down in your notes somewhere or it's already added to your Google Calendar. So things like maybe a hair appointment or you're getting your nails done or a doctor's appointment, things like that. Or a certain event or someone's birthday. Now I have to remind you, make sure you give yourself a generous amount of room for the unexpected because even no matter how well you're prepared for next week and you feel like you've added everything, there's always something that might come up that you literally wouldn't have been able to predict. So make sure to give yourself space in your calendar for those situations. All right, so let's get on to scheduling. So adding the dates and the times. So first of all, we are going to schedule the things that are definite. So appointments, events, things like that. They are going on at a set time and a set date and you literally cannot miss them. Then you're gonna schedule in your red priorities and then after that you're gonna schedule your yellow priorities. And if you still have some space left, keep in mind you have to keep some space for emergencies, you're gonna add any blue ones that you need to or want to do. Now after you've done that, you're gonna go back to Google Calendar and you're going to adjust the time blocks to make sure that they're correct. Because some events, they take two hours, some take 15 minutes, and you wanna make sure all of that is right because you might end up realizing that you have more space or you end up realizing that you have less space. And once that is done, you go back to Todoist and you're just gonna either schedule in more lower priority things because you have more room now or you remove a few. Now when it comes to tags, it really depends on what you prefer. For me, I like it simple. It's just either work or life and that's how I separate. Or you can even add a little tag that says delegate. So like giving this task to someone else, but just having it in your calendar so you know that it needs to be done, but you're not the one doing it. You can have a tag for that as well. And of course, add priorities. So now you can pick what the flags mean, but personally for me, the rule I have is the red flag means that it has to be done the day or the time that I schedule it for. The yellow flag means that it has to be done this week or else. Doesn't matter what day or time, but it has to be done this week. And the blue flag means, oh, it would be nice to get it done. However, if I end up being tight for time, it's okay to postpone this task for next week. And I definitely recommend having both the Google Calendar and the Todoist widget on your phone as a home screen, because then you can easily see what tasks do you have up next, and then you can quickly either add some last minute tasks or ideas in Todoist, or just check off the things you've completed. However, if you do feel like your workload is getting very overwhelming for you, or it's just starting to feel a lot and you're not sure how to organize everything and what to do with it, definitely watch this video where I explain the seven things you should do that I wish I knew about ages ago that will help you manage all of those projects and to-dos. I hope you have a productive week and I will see you next time. Ciao.